Hey guys, how are you? My name is Rodney. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. <laughs> Happy New Year. I hope that you had a great Christmas. I would say that 2023 has been quite a slow year for me regarding my doll purchases and adding things to my doll collection, but the ones that I did add to the collection became integral parts of it and I, I, I'm so happy that I got my hands on the ones that I did. I'm so thankful but unfortunately I didn't get my hands on all of the ones that I did want like the Amazon Frankie one, Jack and Sally, Amazon Draculaura, Venus, oh my gosh that one hurts, oh Repro Gulia. <laughs> I'll just have to be patient. But yeah, so nonetheless, I am really excited to show you 15 of the ones that I ended up falling in love with over time. We're gonna start with number 15, from least to greatest. I feel like what I look for in a doll is quite simple. I, I look for a good face, some good hair. <laughs> I mean, obviously, good fashions, which is seemingly hard to come by these days in dolls. So let's get started, but before we do that, I want you guys to comment right now, who do you think will take the number one spot for my most favorite doll of 2023? It should be easy because I say it all the time. <laughs> so let's start with number 15. She's actually over here. Number 15, <laughs> Demi Batista. Well, Demi Batista without bangs. Now I know that this isn't a 2023 doll. However, I got her this year because I had the intentions of getting her off of eBay and then selling her. And then in the process of that, I removed her bangs, which ended up being the best decision I ever made. She's naked right now because I haven't found her a good outfit. I definitely want to do her justice. Of course, I fell in love with her after seeing her with just like a, a simple middle part and long hair. And you're, you're gonna start to see it. You're gonna see a trend in me, it's inevitable. I feel like what I look for in a doll these days is quite simple and it's very self-explanatory, you know? It's very therapeutic to just do this all day. And that's all that. Number 15, Fianna. So Fianna is one of those weird cases where I didn't really care too much for, I didn't care too much about Fianna until I gave her a little simple restyle. I am totally infatuated with the clothes that she came with. I think MGA and Brad just do a really awesome job with like fabrics and clothing choices in general. Why the fuck you lying? I was gonna talk about the new Always Brad's clothes, but that's the, I, I can't get into that right now. However, this is a really cool new iteration of her. Why well, is this not a new iteration? It's a reproduction of Fianna, and I'm just really happy with the way that she turned out, and I love the hair quality and everything like that. It's very simple, and I, I really like her face. <laughs> Simply put, number 13, Olivia. Guys, if my nipple accidentally pops out, please don't mind it. I, listen, I was trying to be festive, and it's not really working in my favor. But look, I wanted to show you this, though, because look what my friend made me. Her name is Madison, and I'm going to link her TikTok in the description. She's really talented, and she's an artist. And I work with her in my regular job. So I am so thankful for her. Madison, if you're watching this, love you. And I hope you enjoy the Christmas gift that I gave you. <laughs> Cute. Love it. I should put it like, oh, that's a good idea. Have it like right here on the mic. Oh, what a genius am I. If you hear noise, whatever. It's family. Who cares? Number 13, Olivia Woods. <laughs> I feel like I'm like announcing, uh, high school graduates or whatever. Yeah, she's one of the greatest Rainbow High Dolls in my opinion before things hit the fan. I just, I'm really happy to have gotten a chance to, got, to, uh, to happy and thankful that I got a chance to experience her and really enjoy her. I didn't really think that I would be a big fan of hers because automatically I don't really like the whole camo and green and brown color scheme that she has going on, which is funny because my wallet is literally, cam let me get it real quick. Can you believe that I had this wallet for, ooh, I think I was like four when I got it. I might have been older, but for some reason, the number four resonates in my mind. This is the only thing that I will ever get that is camo. And it was actually a mistake when I got it, so. But yeah, I love her skin tone and everything now, and her little freckles, she's adorable. A lot of people come over at my house and they look at her and they say that she's really pretty, so she's one of those girls that, you know, conversation starter. Number 12, my rerouted Abby, abominable. <laughs> she was in desperate need for a reroute because they had the nerve to give such an iconic character poly hair. Mind you, it's the first version of her in G3 and they still gave her poly hair. Like you gotta, you gotta start with a bang, you know, come out with a bang. This restyle is kind of extra, it's kind of ugly. Um, it was a bit of a divisive hairstyle, I would say, um, which is kind of funny because there's, for some reason, there's a lot of Russians on her video on TikTok, like you can go to the comments and there's gonna be like a lot of Russian comments that I have no idea what they're talking about because there are so many of them. Like you can translate them, but there were so many of them and I mostly get Spanish comments. So that was really interesting. 
But yeah, the Russians seem to love Abby. Yeah, she probably would have been even lower on the list had she um, come with like decent hair as it was, but I love it nonetheless. Number 11, Repro Kiana. I literally just got Kiana last week on Friday. I mean, again, it was an instance where I fell in love with her. I just really like how simplistic she is. I love her outfit. I do wish that I had an original Kiana, but she really does get the job done. Her hair is so bouncy. Like her face, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put close-ups and stuff, but her face is just so cool to look at. She makes me feel more confident just by looking at her. And uh, she's stiff competition for sure. So <laughs> yes, good for her. And uh, I love her brown eyes. Now, I feel like a lot of brass dolls don't have brown eyes, right? Oh, never mind. There's like four over here with brown eyes. So <laughs> yeah, let's move on. Look how satisfying that is. That's brilliant. Number 10, my custom Gulia made by the Custom Factory on Instagram. I'm a huge fan of the way that this face up turned out. That artist is so talented and it's a Russian artist. There's a lot of amazing Russian repainters on Instagram, but unfortunately some of them don't even ship to the US. Otherwise you'd be seeing a lot more of these in my collection, but I think it's really out there. It's definitely one of those restyles that I don't expect everyone to like, but this is actually the one time that I put an outfit together that I really liked. Uh, I, just, I just think it's really cool. I love the Crocs and everything. It's, it just, it, it does it for me. She was a Halloween inspired doll. And so I just wanted to add some pops of color. So I opted to give her some red saran at the top just because that's what I had available. And her clothes are actually Bratz clothes with some rainbow high shoes. And again, it's the first time that I've been really proud of an outfit. Surprisingly, old Bratz clothes fit amazingly well on old monster high bodies. <laughs> I mean, just Bratz clothes in general fit on old monster high bodies. Are we still rolling over there? Number nine, SSDC Draculaura. She was sent to me by Monster High and I already thought that she was a really cool gimmicky doll. So I was ecstatic to find out that they were willing to give her to me as a gift. Even her packaging was really fun and well thought out. To me, it was very admirable that most of her hair was black <laughs> with like the streaks of pink in the front. It's really cool. And her face is just one of the most unique doll faces that I've ever seen in person, but it works so well. It's bold, but it works. I love that they gave her lashes. When I look at her, she just fills me with joy, makes me happy. And I think a lot of people on TikTok liked her as well. She has saran hair, so it was a little difficult to curl and figure out, but I kind of got it together, sort of. Overall, I am very pleased with this Draculaura. She gets the number nine spot. Number eight is my one and only Mycene doll. I think I got her in a random lot on eBay and I was really shocked by how much I ended up liking her. She to me was very much the underdog of that lot because she's the only one from that lot on this list. So yeah, I'm just really happy with the way that her face looks. Again, this is, this is my first and only Mycene doll. So I, I was really happy to see like a doll that was similar to Barbie, but not necessarily. But yeah, I gave her, oh, she was the subject of one of my most popular videos. It's uh, the ASMR, my first and only ASMR video. I restored her and uh, here's how she turned out. And I mean, let me ask the audience. Yeah, I'm so thankful to have her. I don't know her name. I knew it at some point and it's super easy to find her name, but got a lot of dolls to get through, so. But yeah, again, she follows the trend with the middle part buzzed down, you know, it's just straight, it's long, it's black. She has Kanekalon hair, if you're wondering, that's why it looks like this. It has the potential to be cancerous and, and the fumes are a little bit poisonous or something like that, I don't really know, but I'm excited to get more of her in the future. Number seven, Victoria Whitman. <laughs> Is, oh my God. She gives me the chills even to this day. Like looking at her, she's just so ethereal and majestic and delicate in the way that she's designed and presented in her features. Like she has brown, ugh, I'm falling in love with her all over again. I, I haven't looked at her this closely in a while and I miss Rainbow High. Oh, I, I feel like Rainbow High is really, it's one of those things that we're gonna miss it when it's gone. I feel like it's so sad where they're heading now, but she made me actually like pink dolls, or I guess this kind of pink. It's like no matter how, no matter how hard life gets, I could not sell this doll. I couldn't do it. Like I would cry. I cried when I sold my first couple of dolls. She's actually like really close to beating Delilah for me. Not that like it's a competition, but she yeah, she's definitely up there with Delilah for sure. Unfortunately, she did not come with a second outfit, but her first outfit is it's cute, it's simple, it's basic, but it has embroidery here. So you guys know I'm a total fiend for embroidered clothes on dolls, and she gives me that. Love her earrings and the fact that she has freckles all over her body. This, when this doll was made, 
I thought that she was gonna set the tone for the future of Rainbow High. I thought that she was gonna really speak volumes to what they were gonna accomplish going forward, but it's been really nothing but a regression since then. So I am super thankful that I got a chance to experience all of the Rainbow High dolls when I got a chance to experience them. I'm getting emotional, oh my gosh. It's just because I feel like it's an era that I never took it for granted, but I feel like it's a era that I'm definitely gonna miss. And to look at her now, to look at all the Rainbow High dolls now, I don't know, I guess I'm like kind of reconnecting with who I was two years ago when I started, so. I'm sorry, that didn't, I was not expecting that turn. Oh my gosh. It's just been a while since I've looked at them this closely. And um, like I said, to know where Rainbow High is heading now, it's, it's sad, but I do love Bratz, so. Number six. Kylie Jenner. Guys, there's a lot of Bratz dolls this year for me. I, I, I invested a lot in Bratz dolls because they just really have done them so well. And again, they did a lot of reproduction this year, so I didn't have the chance to get the originals. And so getting these ones, well, these ones, oh wait, fudge, I gotta put the Kylie Jenner video on, hold on. You're supposed to remind me about things like this. It's funny when you type in Rodney Rainbow on YouTube, controversy comes up after it. Was I really that controversial? You know, despite the fact that it's Kylie Jenner, which is it's so funny because my friend really dislikes the Kardashians. So when I when I did the Kylie video, she was like, it better get at least 100K views. <laughs> She's a very strong doll in my opinion. And besides the fact that it's Kylie Jenner, she is a very strong doll design wise. And I love her skin tone. The shoes really get me. And I say that in the full video, but like shoes on dolls just, I don't know, they mean more to me than I thought. Yeah, her hairstyle was inspired by like Selena, you know, just like really 90s and extra and big and whatever. And I saw somebody clowning her restyle on Twitter. I'm gonna get to that in the next video. So, but yeah, yeah, I do love her though regardless. She's one of the only dolls that I have a duplicate of. Here's my other Kylie that I just got the other day. So I just straightened her hair and you know, removed her bangs as well. And so I think that her face is so beautiful without those bangs. Another doll that's just like super therapeutic to play with. And, and honestly, when she looks at me, I feel really good. Like it's so, I know it's kind of crazy, but I mean, we're doll collectors. You, you, you get it, you get it, right? When she looks at me, my spirit just lightens up. You know, I come home from work and I see her on my dresser. And even on the video that I posted on my Instagram, I'm gonna put it like right here or whatever, you can see her looking in the background and it just makes you feel so good. Her face card absolutely devours and she's really what I expected from a, a Bratz doll in 2023. And you know, she's a very modernized version of what I loved when I was a, ch when I was a child, when I was a kid. All right guys, we are down to the top five. Number five, Moa Lola Jade. Jade is my most recent doll. And again, fell in love with her, of course. She has really cool fashions and she's one of those dolls that I didn't think that I would care about because of the face and I wasn't really totally interested or understanding of the Moolola brand and the way that they um, executed their like creative choices, I guess. But I, I, I'm really pleased with this doll and I feel like it's one of those dolls that you really have to see in person to really appreciate and, and enjoy. I gave her some lashes and I think that that really pulls her face together really well. She's a collector doll, so she should have had lashes to begin with, whatever. Um, the shoes, oh my gosh, the freaking shoes are amazing. Like these big platform shoes on Bratz, that's one of the things for me that really ties everything together when it comes to a Bratz doll. And I feel like that's a big reason why I'm not, the always Bratz Jade is not gonna compare well to this doll for me at all. Oh my gosh, my nipples should come out. What happened to modesty? What happened to hello? What happened to how are you? But yeah, her face is really cool. She has like heterochromia. Is that what it is? It's not bichromia. I think it's heterochromia. She doesn't have her ears pierced though. I don't know why, but she's really cool overall. Like I said, the design is really nice. I wanna get Moa Lola Felicia so bad. That doll is beautiful. Um, but yes, this is what we have and I'm really proud of her. I'm really thankful to have gotten her on the Walmart sale. Let me make this light a little brighter because it's looking like it's going to rain. 90. All right, guys, we're at, we're already at the top four. Wait a minute. I guess we are. Okay. I'm proud of us though. I thought this video was going to take like hours of film and it has been a few hours, but not as many hours as I thought it was going to take. But guys, we're at the top four. They're all here on the platform. Again, before we get to it, let me know who you think the number one is. I mean, it's 
kind of self-explanatory now because they're on the platform. My number four pick for this list is Zoe Electra. Here she is. Again, I want to cry looking at her, but I don't know, where do I even begin? Totally unexpected for me, for sure. I hadn't, I, I never knew what Novi Stars was. I hadn't known, I wasn't privy to that brand prior to getting this girl. And so when I got her, I did a little bit of research and I, it really introduced me to a whole new side of things that I wasn't privy to prior. And I just love her so much, I really do. I think that if I had done a TikTok on her, or a short, she would have been one of the most viewed, one of the most liked videos ever. I love this restyle. This is one of my favorite restyles I've ever done. I actually did a replication of this restyle for free for a subscriber a couple of months ago. So I hope they like her and I hope that she's still holding up. But yeah, the brown eyes, the, the face up. Again, it's really sad to see where Rainbow High or Shadow High is. Um, after releasing such a masterpiece like this, I thought that she was a good, I thought that she was pretty indicative of what the future was going to hold for Shadow High Dolls, but she ended up just being one of the best of all time, which is great for her. And she's super thematic. She's very cool to look at. I think even people who don't like dolls, people who don't even know who what Novi Stars is, can appreciate her. And she's been an integral part of my collection. I wouldn't give her up for the world. Um, I love her so much. She comes with like a really cool detailed jacket. It's amazing. I would really love to see another iteration of Zoe, but unfortunately, I'm not sure if that's gonna happen. But again, I'm so thankful that I got my hands on this one in particular because it was really something special for me. Like amazing. I think she was actually one of the first dolls of this year. So yeah, cool. I can't stop looking at her now. Number three is Repro Tiana. Quite an unexpected entry, I guess. I didn't expect her to be this high on the list. I didn't even know about this character until I got this doll. And I actually got two versions of her. So here's the other one with the bang. She's so cute and cool. And uh, it was really interesting when I first got her because I didn't know that she had nylon hair. To this day, I think that this is some kind of saran. It's so weird, but it can be saran because it didn't burn. But it's definitely super bouncy and it's quite different from all the other nylon girlies that I have, like, as you can see, like, and it stays pin straight. I don't know what the deal is, but yeah, love her face. I think her eyebrows being hidden was a crime. Um, she's another one of those girlies with brown eyes, so I can appreciate that for sure. I gave her a restyle and now she looks more like Olivia Rodrigo. She looks like Olivia Rodrigo to me, so I'm already super happy about that. And I just really love the way that she turned out overall. This jacket, I believe, is a rock angel's jacket. She's she's rocking it, all right. She's rocking it. Yeah, love her. Number two, unarguably one of the best dolls of all time, Campfire Felicia Repro. I immediately fell in love with her the moment that I took her out of the box, and she really was a big reason why I became obsessed with Brass this year. She really made me comfortable with future purchases of Repro Bratz. I was like, okay, if they're doing it this big, I gotta see what the other ones are about. And so she, in a way, introduced me to Tiana. So I'm so thankful to have gotten her. I gotta get another one. I still, to, I still gotta get another one of her. Like, I feel like she, she would be one of those dolls that you can give to people who don't collect dolls. Like, look at her, like, ooh. She just makes me so happy. I'm telling you, every time I look at her, like, every single day when I look at Felicia, she just makes my day, hmm, I would say at least 10% better. Her skin color is astonishing, it's just tremendous. I would say, looking at her now, I would say that her lips could be a little bit better, like they could maybe be more modernized or something, but one of the most stunning dolls that I've ever laid my eyes on, and I'm, having this in my possession like I like how weighty she feels I think her shoes are a little more heavy so she feels like a higher quality doll her fabrics are top tier obviously but she feels good to hold and I said that in the video she feels really good to hold and I really would recommend everyone to at least see her in person and to really play around with her and get her to look how you want her to look but even out of the box she was perfect because when I took her out of the box and I did this and I saw that hair swinging like that I was truly taken aback. I don't know guys, she just makes me feel something that I can't quite explain. And I think the only way you could go wrong with Felicia is if you don't have her in your collection. That would be the only mistake you can make with her. Hi, so I'm editing now, but I forgot to do this in the video. I want to include some honorable mentions and I'm just going to show you some pictures of some that I thought were notable enough to make the, you know, make the list in some way, some form or fashion. 
So, yeah, um, I know it looks like I'm ca calling from some kind of jail cell or something, or I don't know, like, this is worse than a mugshot. Whatever, let's get to the honorable mentions. Did you guess who my number one spot is? Of course it's Gulio. I mean, hello, we all know this. You know this. My number one spot for this year, my number one doll of 2023 was this version of Gulia. And you know what's funny? I don't even know what she's like officially called. I don't know what her actual name is, but I know that her name is Gulia and it's it's a 2023 version of her. I, guess. I don't know, but yeah, she's splendid. It's definitely one of my favorite restyles. I, to this day, am kicking myself for not doing a full video on her. I think that was truly a crime, but I did film me doing her hair, so there was that. But again, I didn't expect to like her this much. I, already, I was already a big fan of G3 Gulia, but then whenever this Gulia came out and arrived, I was like, whoa. I just took her out of the box and I was like, wait a minute, this is a crazy experience. And then since then, she's been my favorite character from Monster High um, at large. So aside from her clothes, to me, she's the perfect doll for me. I feel like she has everything that I could have asked for. I wouldn't change anything. The only problem is that there's no more of her. Like this is the only version of her, but I want more Gulias with this long hair and with this face this freaking face. Also, one of my most favorite restyles I've ever done and some of the best photos that I've ever taken of a doll. So I've played it out, I really have. And hopefully next year I won't speak too much about her because I don't wanna keep talking about her every time I go live and stuff, but I want you to know that she's very special in my collection. I don't think I'll ever top that restyle. I think that's like some of my best work. But yeah, guys, that's it for this video. It's been quite an interesting year for me. <laughs> Got 100K on TikTok. At this point, I'm like at 180K on YouTube. So I'm super excited. I should be having a YouTube silver plaque coming soon, which is crazy because I mean, I don't want to say that I never thought that I would get one of those, but it's crazy that I it's just, I don't know, I guess to be in the moment of that and to be living it out is actually always aspired for and it's here. You know, my dolls mean so much to me and it was a really trying year for a multitude of reasons, both like online and offline. And when I feel like nobody else is there, I have them. They come for me in a way that I don't expect anyone to ever understand, which is fine. When I started my doll collection, I didn't know how far I would go and how many amazing people I would meet, let alone work with, and how many people would understand me and, and get it. And I think for like the first time in a long time, I was, I felt understood. I felt understood by you guys, as well as like the general public. and. It's been one of the first times that I, I don't feel ashamed of being who I am. It's just a little like bittersweet because I don't know when this is going to end. I don't know when I'm going to stop. I don't know when people will stop watching me. But I think to stand here where I am now, I can only, I can only be proud and prideful. <laughs> As I said, I hope that you guys have a happy new year and an amazing 2024. I'm so thankful to go into the new year with you guys. Thank you for everything that you've done for me. And I hope that 2024 is an even stronger year for us all together. So I guess that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much. So yeah, have a good day. Love you. Bye.